All right, guys, so name of the channel is Future in the Making, and we're sitting here with Sam, who's really making the future right here in Detroit with these grounded RV camper vans. And I appreciate you sitting down with us and just wanted to learn a little bit more about the technology and a little bit more about your story and how you got into making these electric camper vans here in Detroit. Yeah, we started the company in 2022. We launched the product in 2023. And then since then we've expanded to a whole assortment of modular electric vans for different use cases. And so that includes mobile medicine, mobile dental, mobile pet grooming, mobile command centers and offices, refrigerated vans, electric food trucks. And I would say that Grounded's mission is to sustainably put people and businesses on electric wheels. And so it's been cool to evolve the business in that way over the last few years beyond what the just the original product was. And now we're serving su such a sort of variety of different customers for different use cases. When did this actually start for you? I have a unusual background, which I guess some founders have unusual backgrounds, but I was always interested in three things growing up, entrepreneurship, computer science, and filmmaking. And so I actually was a filmmaker from a young age. Thought I wanted to be a film director. In college, I studied all three. I have a degree in business and entrepreneurship, but also studied computer science and film. And when I graduated, I actually started in advertising. So I worked on the creative side of the advertising industry. So making TV commercials, branding campaigns, interactive installations at events, really fun stuff. And sometimes we'd bring technology into some of our projects too. So there was a little bit of that. So I did the ad tech thing for about three years and I really enjoyed it from a technology perspective. It was interesting technical problems to solve and I worked with great people, but I was never passionate about ad tech. And so at some point I, I just had the itch to go do something different. I was living in Manhattan and my studio apartment was literally no more than 200 square feet. Yeah. Hey, all my friends would joke with me about this is the smallest place you'll ever live in your entire life. And then COVID happened and everything shut down and I said, hold my beer. And I built out a camper van. And then I lived in this van for about six months and traveled all over the country, which was a really amazing experience to go from living in downtown Manhattan for years to living in a van and waking up in the morning in a national park. Yeah. It was a factory reset for my mind. I'm from outside Atlanta, so I grew up going to the Smoky Mountains yeah. three times a year with my parents. We would just drive up four hours. It's beautiful in the Smoky Mountains. So when we launched the company, the mission was originally a little bit more focused on outdoor adventure, so putting campers on electric wheels, and it's obviously evolved to businesses and to a variety of different activities and yeah. services that we want our customers to be able to provide from grounded vans. You're really leveraging a lot of interesting technologies and strategies. I'm really interested in that side of it because part of what I'm thinking about a lot with this channel is helping people to think differently about how they build and how we strategize. And I think that there's so much of that goes on inside of your company. It might not always be so evident from a surface. And it seems like you're really moving pretty quickly with some of these pieces. Can you speak to just like that mentality? Where does that come from? It comes from the software world. So I'm a software engineer, and it also comes from what I learned at my brief time at SpaceX, which I think SpaceX takes a software mentality to hardware. Sure. Maybe you can extract some of the value of the approach that some of these really fast moving, fast growing software companies can do. I think that's what Elon's companies have done phenomenally well. And then that's what Grounded's trying to do in some ways. And that's why you've got third generation of a huge product like this in less than three years. And then not to mention that we've been able to expand to all these verticals. I think these are important things for people to consider and to also recognize that not all hardware is built the same way. And for me, I've been thinking about this idea a lot that We've been so focused on innovating on what we build. We're building all these new technologies and everything like that, but not focused as much on innovating on how we build. And it sounds like you're doing a bit of both, which I think is really valuable and probably can be related to some of the success that you've had so far. So actually the way it started was I knew people cared about customization, right? Everybody wants something a little bit different. If you go to the big companies, you're stuck with a floor plan. So that was the impetus of this idea of modularity where people could choose a different layout 
And then we built this configurator tool. So you can basically design in 3D your van. The idea is it's like Lego blocks. So you choose which Lego blocks you want. It's not customization in the sense of, hey, we're gonna like work with you and build your dream house. It's customization in the sense of, here's the Lego library, choose which components you want, and here's the places they can go, yeah. which is a lot more customization than what you might be able to get from the big players. But then this whole design approach and engineering approach to the whole internal build to enable that modularity is exactly what unlocked this sort of much vaster uh, ecosystem. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I think about some of these things in the future. I talk a lot about custom at scale. And I think in some ways you're like building that, that type of thing. I know you're scaling and growing now, but you could see that type of thing can continue to grow and scale. It's a really interesting approach is just giving more tools and more access. This is also a trend that I see happening more and more in manufacturing by tools becoming more accessible because of some of the digital interfaces that allow folks to work with like your milling machine or 3D printing or whatever else. But you're taking that one step further and not just you having access, but actually giving the customer access, which is a really smart approach. There's pros and cons for sure. We're not necessarily making our lives easy with that but i think it's cool for the customers and like i said it's, it really is what has unlocked our ability to serve all these different verticals so the thesis for a while has been we get economies of scope in a way by having this range of verticals where they feed into each other building a vehicle from scratch it's a billion dollar endeavor yeah. and there's a graveyard of ev startup companies right and scaling up manufacturing and you have to be at volume extremely quickly for the economics to even remotely work. And so we took a pretty different approach, right? We said, hey, there's all these companies who are already investing billions of dollars into developing these platforms. They're getting pretty good. This has almost 300 miles of range. Yeah. And so let's build on these instead. And so this will be the biggest, you know, in terms of volume per part, this is the biggest piece of the bomb. And then we'll sort of build everything on this platform. But yeah, should we check out yeah, the, yeah, check let's, out the let's... inside? So this is our medical van. What you see here is a patient bed on the driver's side where a patient can lie down. And there's some storage for medical supplies up in the front. And then on the passenger side, in the front corner there is, is almost a small mobile office where a nurse or a doctor could sit, a practitioner could sit and talk to the patient or do work on the computer. And then the back half of the passenger side, you've got this sort of industrial, almost kitchen countertop, cleanable stainless steel surface and then there's a refrigerator, lots of storage space, drawers, they're all soft closed. They've got magnets that keep them shut while you're driving. And yeah, this one's a pretty simple medical build. And, and then we wrapped on the outside with vinyl wrap. It's the artwork, we call it Dreamers for American Dreamers. The idea is it's representing the entrepreneurs and practitioners, the customers that we aim to serve with our putting businesses on wheels. Yeah, love it. It's really beautiful and the finish and everything is really nice. Okay, so this is a newer iteration for you, as you said, expanding from the camper van side of things into this more professional space. In some ways, if you can imagine it and if it could fit into this space, there's a good chance it's gonna work and you'll have some ability for folks to get creative within some bounds, which is- We've which had is really great. interesting requests like mo mobile massage van, IV, blood draw, food truck. We did one for the Transit Authority of Oregon. So yes, I would agree with what you said. There's yeah. a lot that we can do in the space. And so there's the energy component. You have this yeah. giant 173 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, you don't need any generators or anything. You don't need like a generator. Just, yeah, yeah. People are surprised. Some of the use cases I mentioned, particularly medicine, food trucks, some other ones, they have power requirements, right? They want to go and operate for eight hours shifts, 10 hour shifts, 12 yeah, hour shifts. Yeah. And so what they've done historically is they'll bring a generator and they run the generator all day and they pay for all that fuel. And so when we tell them that they can be fully electric, there is some skepticism at first that we're often met with. But when we explain that, first of all, how big this battery is, and then what we can do on the inverter side the fact that there's a thousand watts of solar on the roof that we're oh, actually yeah. working on a way to I expand even that, right? So there's just a ton of power. And yeah. so our proposition is get rid of the loud, dirty, expensive. It's kind of terrible. Like for those of you who have experienced, everybody has, I'm sure you've been around a food truck or something like that. You're trying to like yell to the person <laughs> to explain your order. It's 
Well, and especially like the food truck villages, which on one hand are awesome, where you, you know, sometimes they do these pop-ups. You go and there's like 12 food trucks and you, you go with friends and some friends can go here and some friends can go there. Yeah. But it's so loud and there's exhaust being blown all around and it's, every time I go, I'm like, man, this, imagine if this was just completely silent. <laughs> that would be nice. I appreciate you helping us move closer to that, that future. Yep. So let's check out the other van. So what I started to say before is this, this one is wrapped and we, we can do custom exterior wraps for the commercial customers. So we'll put your branding and we can either you can design the wrap or we can work with you to design it and we can wrap the vehicle. This one was hand painted by two Detroit artists who are local, Ivan Montoya and, and Joey Salomon. And I think they did a really beautiful job with this one. Yeah, it is quite nice. So I'll, yeah, I'll show you the inside. One of the things we did is we actually replaced the rear door. So the Chevrolet brake drop that this vehicle platform is comes with a roll up garage door. We ripped that out. We put this door in instead. We designed this whole frame that allows us to have better insulation in the rear. So this is a five foot pull out drawer um, from the back. Where oh, wow. You can cook out here. You can serve food. You can have people gathered around. You've got storage in here. The material for the cabinets that you see this patterns and textures on is 100% recycled and mixed in for these textures are single use plastic utensils. And then the countertops, we use another recycled material. And then the walls, it's actually a rice based material. Oh, interesting. And it's more durable, it's water resistant, it's rot resistant, a little bit stiffer. And then my favorite feature of this one is the raisable bed. So the bed actually comes down. Oh, wow. That's pretty great. And then I can show the app too that I was talking about. We deployed a lot of technology into the product itself. So this is not your typical camper van or medical van where it's just a sort of furniture or mechanical build. We put a computer inside the vehicle and that computer is connected to all of the electronic components, every electronic appliance the batteries, the vehicle itself. And we have a mobile app and we have a web app version of this too for fleets. It's basically the Tesla app, but for RVs. So if you have a yeah. Tesla from the app, you can see where your car is and you can turn on the air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. You can do the same stuff with your grounded van. That's great. And I think it's even maybe more useful than just with a regular car because yeah. you have your whole sort of house in the back here. What do you see as the future? What does Grounded look like in five years from now? We want to be the leading provider of modular vans for all of these commercial use cases. There's not really a brand and company that builds products in all these different spaces, especially not electric an entire medical clinic, an entire office or command center. We have our software for fleet management and vehicle management. That's really where we shine. And there is a market for gas powered medical vans and gas powered pecrooming vans that exists, but there doesn't really exist a single brand that has offerings in all of these different spaces and products within each in the way that we're trying to do it. And so in five years, we hope to be producing hundreds of vehicles every year across all these different verticals. Like what flipped in you to be like, I'm gonna do this? For me, after building my camper van and living in it and pretty radically experiencing a totally different way of living where you don't have a fixed house or apartment that you're living out of, you're able to experience nature, you're able to be mobile, what you're doing every day, completely on the go and be in a different place every day. That really inspired me to think a lot about mobility in the sense of being able to either live or provide operations, services in a mobile way, go anywhere, be anywhere, and what the implications of that could be for the way that we provide care, provide services as a society where it can look different or this can be a nice complement to brick and mortar. And that really inspired me to think outside the box of how we can provide mobile care and mobile services and what you can do in this blank canvas of a vehicle. And then the other piece of it is the electrification piece too. I think the shift to electrification is important I think aside from doing damage to the, the planet and atmosphere and things like that from our all the fuel that we burn and all of our vehicles, even forget about climate change and just think about what we're doing in terms of air pollution 
noise pollution. I've owned an electric vehicle for a few years. I think it's just a better experience in every way. There's no vehicle maintenance, there's no noise, it's clean. And so I just would love to see and do my part to help accelerate this transition to electrification too. And so I think we've really opened a lot of people's eyes on what's possible on an electric platform. And so that's the other piece. And so it's combining these two things, the passion for uh, expanding, you know, what we can do from a vehicle, what we can provide from a vehicle with the shift to electrification. Love it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys sticking with us through this and really appreciate you taking the time to tell Thanks. us a bit more about Grounded. You know, folks can learn more on your website. What's your website? It is groundedevs.com. Cool. Yeah. And I think hopefully we'll be able to do some more content with you as well. I'd really like to dive into some of these pieces. I'd love to hear from you guys, maybe some of the other things that you'd like to see and hear about and hear us talk about it. You're really doing some very innovative things, as I said, and I look at a lot of different businesses and products. And I think that your approach is really smart and I respect that. And I wish you a lot of success. No, I so. appreciate it. All right. Yeah, thanks awesome. a lot, Chris. Thanks, Sam.